welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Inlet, Tug and Barge, a marine transportation company specializing in harbor services focusing on the port of Anchorage and the major commercial participants in the Cook Inlet region, providing customers with marine services specifically tailored to their needs. Arctic Wire Rope and Supply, an Alaskan company providing lifting and rigging products since 1983, manufacturing custom wire rope, chains, and nylon slings here in Anchorage. On the web at arcticwirerope.com. The National Weather Service. Hello again, everyone, and thanks for joining us here on KKM for Sunday's show. The uh, Colville River Flood Advisory for the village of Colville, that's been canceled, and uh, the flood watch continues for all rivers up here draining the uh, coastal plain of the central Beaufort Sea coastline. And then the flood warning continues uh, along the Dalton Highway here from milepost 394 to Dead Horse. That's due to snow melt and uh, ice in the main channel of the Sag River. And also the uh, flood watch continues for the Kaparik River. Otherwise, uh, all the other rivers now are either open or mostly open. Looking at satellite imagery, here's the next storm uh, south of, kind of spun up there south of the Komodorsky Islands. That's going to bring the Gale force winds and rain into the Aleutians this evening and overnight tonight, and then that will shift eastward into the central Aleutians for some gale force winds and rain tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon. On the uh, goes west imagery here, you can see this is the band of clouds that brought the uh, rain into the North Gulf Coast today and the showers across northern Cook Inlet and up into the Susitna Valley to Denali Park. North of the west of the mountains, though, it was a lot more hit and miss, and the showers are a lot of clouds, but uh, the showers are more scattered to isolated back to the northwest. This area right here with some thunderstorms developed this afternoon, just northwest of Anatovic, and then this uh, patch right here, that's some pretty good cluster of thunderstorms moving northward just to the east of Eagle this afternoon. The temperatures reached the mid-80s again. Pretty nice down here along the southeast coast, uh, just some variable clouds, partly to mostly sunny conditions otherwise, but a lot of clouds here to the west of that, that band of moisture, weakening front washing out here along the southwest coast and the low pressure center still uh, just west of the Pribilofs earlier today. That kept it windy along the Alaska Peninsula and along the southwest coast there. Uh, enough gradient there to keep the winds going, gusting 20 to 35 miles per hour from the Alaska Peninsula all the way up to Nunavak Island and the Yukon Delta coast. Uh, less wind south, 10 to 20 miles an hour, areas of rain and showers over the Pribilof Islands, this weakening system there. And then there's the next system pushing the rain and wind into the far western Aleutian zone out there. Otherwise, another sunny, hot day here over the eastern interior. Cooled off a little bit over the central interior with the uh, clouds and uh, scattered showers around, but uh, still pretty hot here from the eastern uh, Alaska range northward there to the Brooks Range. And uh, the forecast for tonight, uh, look for some scattered showers up over the upper Yukon Valley. Again, uh, northward to about the southern slopes of the Brooks Range. Some leftover showers here over the northwest valleys from that trough. And also, a uh, band of showers should move across the Copper River Basin overnight tonight. So uh, fire dangers diminishing there with uh, chance of showers continues over south central Alaska. And the rain changing to showers here for the north Gulf Coast uh, where... Uh, Cordova picked up about four tenths of an inch of rain that should become a little more showery tonight and uh, by comparison both uh, Seward and Willow picked up about a third of an inch of rain so some pretty good wetting rains with this trough as it moved moving northeastward there 
More uh, rain for Kodiak Island with the remnants of this trough here and some scattered showers up over at Bristol Bay. Isolated showers up there just east of Norton Sound, but also some clearing taking place. This week trough brings some scattered showers into the Alaska Peninsula this evening. Otherwise, uh, improving should become dry there for the Pribilof Islands and lighter winds, maybe some clearing. And then the next system out there to the west spreading gale force winds and rain into the central Aleutians. And we got gale force westerly winds with the main low center, 979 millibars there just uh, now north of Attu Island. Otherwise, uh, the southwest coast now lighter winds tomorrow and drying out with uh, some areas of partly sunny skies there from Togiak Bay up across Kuskokwim Bay and into the Yukon Delta. But still a pretty good chance of showers here over northeast Bristol Bay. Chance of showers south central Alaska tomorrow. Uh, and uh, some areas will see some partly sunny skies. Chance of showers over the mountainous areas of the Copper River Basin. And also a chance of showers up over the uh, east, northeast interior from about the White Mountains northward to the uh, Brooks Range and isolated showers from the isolated thunderstorms from the 40 mile country there uh, say down to Northway Toke up toward Eagle again in the afternoon that's the best chance of that but they could break out again along the Brooks Range uh, like they did today. No change for the southeast coast just some variable clouds with uh, west to northwest breezes uh, strongest in the afternoon hours chance of showers there right over the mountainous areas of Kodiak Island and uh, is this uh, for the forecast for Tuesday, that front will continue eastward and weaken, uh, bring small craft advisories here to the Alaska Peninsula and also along the southwest coast right up to St. Lawrence Island. Got small craft advisories going for Tuesday, but gale force winds here for the northern Bering Sea, St. Matthew Island there, enough gradient uh, in that portion of the front, but the main low hanging back there. So uh, winds won't be as strong, but look for rain to move into the Alaska Peninsula uh, probably late tomorrow night and continuing into Monday, becoming showery over the eastern Aleutians. A lot of uh, gusty winds and showers here across all of the Aleutian chain and much of the Bering Sea. I'll be rotating up into the Pribilof Islands uh, Tuesday night and into Wednesday. Otherwise, uh, scattered showers again, Kodiak Island, the Kenai Peninsula, chance of showers south central Alaska, mostly over the Talkeetna Mountains and the Chugach. Uh, <clears throat> should be partly and mostly sunny for northern Cook Inlet as well as all the way down into Kamishak Bay. Partly sunny skies from the North Gulf Coast, uh, Prince William Sound area, uh, scattered showers over the Copper River Basin, still some isolated thunderstorms possible, 40 mile country up into the upper Yukon Valley and some hit and miss showers up over the central and eastern Brooks Range, but pretty good conditions, mostly sunny back here over the western north slope in the Arctic Coast down into the Kobuk Valley. Not bad for the Koyukuk Valley as well, partly to mostly sunny skies. No change for the southeast coast here, partly to mostly sunny skies with west and northwest breezes. Again, uh, southerlies though, as high as 25 knots uh, in the afternoon there for the uh, northern Lynn Canal Marine Zone with this low up over the Yukon, up of a gradient uh, to pick those winds up, but they'll be much lighter elsewhere there across the Panhandle. Temperatures down that way this afternoon, again, ranged from uh, 48 over at Elfin Cove to 63 in Juneau. So 59 at Kowak with 62 at Annette. Uh, otherwise, 52 degrees at uh, Petersburg, 51 rain at Cordova, and 52 degrees with rain in Valdez. They picked about 15 hundredths of an inch in the last 24 hours. 51 at Seward, 49 in Kenai, 53 at Homer. Just 55 degrees in Palmer and Anchorage today, 63 at Gulcana, 77 degrees uh, Northway, down about five from yesterday, 73 at Delta, 70 degrees there at Fairbanks with 84 over at Eagle, 75 at Fort Yukon. Cooler to the west here under clouds and some scattered showers, just 61 degrees at uh, Manchumana and Tananaw, 68 at Bethel, 72 Arctic Village, 32 degrees. Uh, right at the frost point there for uh, Ted Horse, 33 at Barrow, 49 at Point Lay, 53 at Cape Lisbon, but uh, around the bend there, 50, 39 degrees at uh, Point Hope with uh, 51 at Kotzebue, 58 at Buckland, and a 45, mid 40s here on the south coast of the uh, Seward Peninsula, and about 50 here, uh, 49 at Unalakleet, 50 degrees at Amonic, 45 at St. Mary's, and then the uh, Custom Valley McGrath came in with 62 today. 55 at Sleep Mute and a little cooler at Bethel with 51. 39 both at Tin City and at Gamble up on St. Lawrence Island. 
Perbaloff Islands uh, lower to mid 40s this afternoon with the clouds and rain. 46 at Unalaska, mid 40s over the central Aleutians, lower 40s out to the west, and uh, mid to upper 40s to the Alaska Peninsula. Pilot Point at 55 and King Salmon had 52 with Kodiak at right at 48. Lows tonight, mid 40s there for Kodiak Island and mid to upper 40s here across south central Alaska in the Copper River Basin. About the same here, mid 40s to lower 50s across the southeast coast, lower 50s in the upper Yukon Valley. Otherwise, we'll see in the 40s here through much of the central interior and the coldest locations, central and eastern Arctic coast, upper 20s to lower 30s there. Mid 30s back out over the northern Bering Sea to near 40 near the Perbolofs, lower 40s here for the Aleutians. And the highs tomorrow, again, uh, cooling, seeing a cooling off period there, at least under 80 degrees. The Eagle forecast high 77, Fort Yukon 73. Still the Tanana Valley pushing up uh, in the upper 60s to near 70 tomorrow afternoon. It's not too bad. Uh, 58, the forecast high for Anatuvik, upper 30s to mid 40s there along the central and eastern Arctic coast. But... Uh, upper 40s to mid 50s on the western coastline there and lower to mid 50s to near 60 over the northwest valleys the Kobuk Valley into the lower 60s 50s here over the southwest coast Bristol Bay lower 50s for the Alaska Peninsula 40s out over the Aleutians and the Bering Sea once again flying weather marginal VFR hugging the coastline from about Port Alexander up to Elfin Cove Yakutat back to Cordova and up into western Prince William Sound and the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula Looking uh, kind of marginal here for the uh, area from Cook Inlet from about Kenai on down into Kamishak Bay, but becoming VFR for Kodiak Island. And then that area, marginal VFR extending up to the western Alaska range, but uh, that should become VFR through the passes in the afternoon. Patch of uh, marginal VFR up there over the White Mountains in the eastern interior. IFR along the eastern Arctic coast, otherwise VFR back to the west. and. VFR right down the coastline with some marginal stuff here from the Alaska Peninsula, extreme western Alaska Peninsula, mostly the eastern Aleutians northward, and then some IFR with that next front as it uh, pushes eastward here. IFR up across St. Lawrence Island as well, but uh, again, pretty good conditions here out west. And for Anatovic, uh, pass looks pretty good on both approach uh, VFR. VFR forecast also for Adigan and Lake Clark. Uh, marginal VFR possible on the eastern entrance, especially early in the day, and otherwise both passes will be VFR. Rainy VFR on either approach. Windy looking good, both south and north entrances, VFR. Isabel VFR in the eastern Alaska range, uh, VFR for Mentasta. Tanita VFR on the eastern and western entrances. Portage, uh, marginal VFR to start with, becoming VFR in the afternoon, even on the eastern entrance. Chilkoot and White, both VFR. Freezing levels showing that uh, warm push of air ahead of that uh, with the gale force winds southerlies here, pulling some warmer air northwards, uh, four to 6,000 feet over the northern Bering Sea, 8,000 feet over the eastern Aleutians. Then that cold pool with an upper trough that's lying right through this position down to about 4,000 feet here and then back to six to eight, 10,000 feet now, just about regressed all the way into Canada. But still, that to support those temperatures back into the uh, upper 70s here over the eastern interior tomorrow. And for icing threats, uh, mixed icing possible in those showery areas up here over the northeast, but no icing through the central interior from uh, the Copper River Basin up into the Kobuk Valley and no attack area. Uh, some hit and miss icing of the rhyme to mixed varieties here, mostly below 9,000 feet over the southwest part of the state, uh, but not quite out to the coastline. Kenai Peninsula, Kodiak Island, and those places, no icing over the panhandle, and then a band of icing here with that front that's advancing eastward across the Bering Sea there from the Russian coast all the way down into Adak and Atka. And there we go, upper level low, that trough now over Bristol Bay for tomorrow. A couple of branches, one branch coming around that incoming storm here, the jet stream southwesterly 70 knots there across the uh, central Bering Sea through the Bering Strait. Another branch of southeast winds uh, up along the North Gulf Coast into the interior there with that uh, upper trough gradually shifting eastward. So that'll bring a little bit of cooling, continued cooling into the central and eastern interior with a little bit of moisture again in the form of showers up over that area. Otherwise, the southeast coast stays under the upper ridge and no changes expected there with the very light wind conditions and uh, pretty light winds. Still southerlies, 25 knots along the southwest coast up to 50 knots, 3,000 foot winds, 
south 25 to 45 knots there over the Aleutians and up to 30 knots for the Pribilofs south but lighter here along the southwest coast just 15 to 20 knots light variable winds over the eastern and uh, central interior areas up to 30 knots out of the east over the eastern Arctic coast with that will be some light to isolated moderate chop and then uh, some moderate chop here approaching Nikolsky but exiting Adak uh, to Atka northward to the Pribilofs and more bumpiness there with the uh, gale force winds out over the western Aleutians. And after the break, I'll be back with a look at the marine forecasts. Deep water moves at a different rate of speed than shallow water. Different depth levels on the same river can change its characteristics, presenting a dangerous situation to the less experienced rafter. This is what not to do when you fall out of the raft. Never. To provide for the safest trip, utilize the services of professional whitewater rafting guides who are experienced and understand the characteristics and dynamics of a river. Depending on the river conditions, Professional guides will make adjustments in the size of rafts and even the number of people in a raft to ensure your adventure is a safe one. Before venturing on rivers, whitewater enthusiasts should always listen to local National Weather Service broadcasts over NOAA Weather Radio to hear the latest river conditions and weather forecasts. the solitude of an inner world, the allure of exploring wondrous places where few people have ventured, the appreciation of geological formations, and even the fluttering of bats add to the mystique of caving and attract many enthusiasts. But caving has its own inherent risks. Although caves would seem to be far removed from rain and rivers, water hazards do exist here. Most caves are damp or wet, and many have active streams. But even dry caves can flood from rains, and not necessarily from heavy downpours. An all-day drizzle can raise water to dangerous levels, first saturating the ground, and then permeating down between the layers of rock, flooding a cavern with water. Other caves have outside streams, which even under normal weather conditions go directly into a cave. Rising water from rain can flood a cave within minutes. If the stream drains a large area outside, localized thunderstorms that are miles away from the cave can cause it to flood, creating an underground tomb for the unfortunate people trapped inside. Here are some things to remember about caving. Water levels can be low in some sections and high in others. Water levels can rise very fast, but be very slow to recede. There can be a long delay between the time it rains and the time it actually floods. In caves where you go through crawlways or spots with little airspace, it doesn't take much water to cut off your exit. Careful attention must be given to the weather conditions prior to entering the cave. Listen to NOAA weather radio before entering a cave. In a lot of situations, when rain or thunderstorms are in the forecast, the safest thing to do is just stay away. Know your caves. Know which caves are subject to flooding and which are not. To avoid drowning, hypothermia, or injury, safety must always come first. With some precaution, cavers can expect a safe adventure. Urban areas have their own flash flood problems. Open storm drains, culverts, and drainage ditches are man-made arroyos and concrete canyons. Found in nearly every community and normally dry throughout the year, storm drains are attractive places for children to play. These seemingly benign ravines are designed to quickly move runoff from excessive rain and rapidly melting snow away from a community. Since this process fills the ravine with water, often with little warning, storm drains and culverts are potentially hazardous areas and no place for children. 
Sometimes the pull from the fast-moving water is so great, you could easily be pulled into a storm drain. They were playing in the water, and all of a sudden he disappeared in the sewer. Just got sucked in. Just got sucked in. He just disappeared. Was gone. He was there and then gone. To add to the problem, the increased number of paved streets and parking lots found in sprawling communities do not allow water to soak into the ground. This contributes to rapid urban runoff and storm drain flooding. On a typical city block, impervious surfaces such as pavement and rooftops generate nine times more runoff than a woodland area of the same size. Don't take chances. Keep yourself and your children away from storm drains. Here's a quick summary to help you remember the main points. Canyons can funnel large amounts of flood water from great distances with no warning to the unwary hiker. A dry arroyo can quickly become a raging river. River conditions change. When whitewater rafting, know your river. Experience counts. Be knowledgeable of current weather conditions before you enter a cave. Don't allow your children to play in or near storm drains. They can be pulled in and swept away by swift moving water. Stay informed about current river and weather conditions by listening to NOAA weather radio, commercial radio, and television. Keep in mind that should you need to be rescued, you are also placing someone else's life in danger. Respect the power of moving water. Northwest winds increased to 20 to as high as 25 knots here on the central and south coast of the Panhandle tomorrow. Those seas running about uh, 7 feet. Over the inside waters, mostly northwest at about 20 knots or 15 to 20 knots with 4 foot seas. Southerlies for northern Lynn Canal at 20. And then those uh, Tuesday afternoon pick up to about 25 knots. So looking at small craft advisories there again for northern Lynn Canal. Otherwise, no change here over the central and southern inside zones. And uh, lighter winds here, northwest 20 on the central and south coast. Uh, the north coast westerlies at 15 knots, seas running about 5 to 7 feet. For Prince William Sound, northern Cook Inlet, look for southwesterlies at about 10 tomorrow. West winds pretty light for the north Gulf Coast uh, at 10 knots. And then southerlies at 10 for the Barren Islands. Pretty light winds in here, light and variable across Kamishak Bay, Kodiak Island. Southwest breezes at about 15 knots on both sides there and southerlies for Southern Cook Inlet only at 10 knots. Looking at Tuesday, uh, Prince William Sound, no change. Westerlies at 15 for the North Gulf Coast. Southwest winds across the Barren Islands up to the northeast there and southwest 15 for Northern Cook Inlet. Southern Cook Inlet still southerly at 15 knots. That extends down into Kamishak Bay and southwest at 15 here for Shelikoff Strait and the east side of Kodiak Island up to the Barrens. For Bristol Bay, still looking at light variable winds in the forecast for tomorrow. Seas down to 3 feet. Southeast, uh, 15 knots for the Bering Sea side of the peninsula. Southerlies at 15 on the Pacific side. And pretty light wind southwest of Kodiak Island. Then those will pick up here. Small craft advisories for the Alaska Peninsula as that front approaches from the west on Tuesday. 25 to 30 knots. Seas 8 to 10 feet. Southeast winds increasing to 20 knots for Bristol Bay. And southerlies increasing to 20 knots there southwest of Kodiak. For the uh, 
Eastern Aleutians tomorrow, southeast winds at about 20 knots. We've got gale force winds coming in to the central Aleutians uh, tomorrow, 35 to maybe even 40 knots there for Adak and Atka, and then uh, more gales out here to the west, southwest 35 for the western zone. And the outlook for Tuesday, 15 to 20 knot winds here for the eastern Aleutians with seas running 5 to 8 feet. Southwesterly, small craft advisory, central Aleutians 25 knots and 30 knots, so everybody's down under the gale force zone here. Uh, even out towards Shimia. For the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, light southerlies at 15, a little brisker here, southeast 20 knots from uh, north of Nunavak Island, up across St. Lawrence Island, and 30 knots southerlies for the Pribilofs, and 30 knots southeasterlies here for the northern Bering Sea, mostly west of St. Matthew Island. Those will become gale force on Tuesday there with uh, small craft advisories here all along the southwest coast, right up across St. Lawrence Island with uh, seas running six to seven feet. Winds diminished to south at 20 there for the Pribilofs and up along the Arctic coast there. 20 to 25 knot winds here on the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline with the strongest over toward demarcation point at 25 knots. 15 knot easterlies there for the central and west coast, even lighter here from Wales to Cape Thompson just east at 10 knots. And the outlook for Tuesday, Pretty light wind, still uh, easterlies 20 to 25 knots on the eastern coastline, northeast 10 to 15 knots on the west side. And looking at tonight again, uh, span of showers moves across the Copper River Basin, showers Kodiak Island, northeast Bristol Bay, scattered showers over the upper Yukon Valley, and uh, scattered showers over the Alaska Peninsula. And then that next front brings uh, those gale force winds and rain into the central Aleutians with uh, Better chance of showers, a little more wider spread coverage here with isolated thunderstorms up over the northeast interior. Chance of showers south central Alaska, chance of showers the uh, Copper River Basin, no change for the panhandle for the next couple of days. And uh, still kind of showery and cloudier in the eastern interior and that next front coming. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.